What time is it? It's science time! Hi, Mr. C, and this super smart group is my science crew. Lila is our notebook navigator, Alfred is our experiment expert, Riley is our dynamite demonstrator, and London is our research wrangler. Working with my team is the best and makes learning so much fun. Actually, you should join us. As we drop more water on the penny, we start seeing a rounded shape at the surface. The molecules below the surface are attracted to one another and pull in all directions. However, the water molecules on the surface experience an inward pull because they don't have as many molecules to hang on to. This is what makes the surface of water so strong. Eventually, we add too much water and the force of gravity is greater than the surface tension of the water, causing it to spill over. Submarines use ballast and trim tanks, which are filled with air or water to submerge or raise the ship. When the submarine is floating on the surface, the tank is filled with air, causing its density to be less than the surrounding water. Friction is the resistance one object experiences when moving over another surface or object. When the balloon is empty, the disc doesn't slide across the table as easily. The hovercraft pushes air downwards through the opening to create a cushion of air. That cushion of air reduces the friction between the disc and the tabletop and allows it to easily glide. The first roller coaster opened on June 16, 1884 in Brooklyn, New York. Roller coasters are able to race on their tracks because of potential energy. If you've ever ridden on a roller coaster, you know that the first hill is the tallest and honestly, the best. In order for the cart to make it over the second hill, the first hill must be taller. Yippee! A thermometer is a tool that scientists use to measure the heat energy of an object. The thermometer has indicating fluid inside of it which expands as it gains heat energy and contracts as it loses heat energy. If you place a thermometer into a warm cup of water, the liquid expands and rises. This is because of thermal expansion. The markings on the thermometer allow us to accurately determine the temperature of an object. Lightning is a buildup of electrical charges in a cloud, and those charges are attracted to objects on the ground, like a house. Fortunately, Benjamin Franklin invented the lightning rod in 1752 to help protect buildings. Lightning rods safely attract and move electrical energy from a lightning bolt to the ground and reduce the risk of a lightning strike. Soap cleans our hands and it also reduces the surface tension of water. The reason soap works so well is because soap molecules have two ends, a hydrophobic end and a hydrophilic end. The hydrophilic end is attracted to water while the hydrophobic end avoids water and is attracted to grease and oils. When you blow air into the soapy solution, the air gets trapped inside and forms a bubble. The walls of a bubble are pretty cool and there are three layers. A soap layer, a water layer, and then another soap layer. And if we look really closely, we can see that those soap molecules are all lined up in a similar fashion. The hydrophilic end of each soap molecule is attracted to the water molecules, while the hydrophobic end is trying to stay away as far as possible. The bubble eventually pops because the water between the layers of soap evaporates. The moment of inertia occurs when you start turning the yardstick. Once you apply a rotational force, the juice boxes begin to move. The closer the juice boxes are to the center of the yardstick, the easier it is to start rotating that stick. When the juice boxes are moved further away, it requires a greater force to get the mass moving, and it's also more difficult to change directions. Here's a fun experiment you can try at home. Build a ramp and then find objects to place on the ramp. Slowly lift the ramp until the object begins sliding. The moment it starts sliding is the moment the force of gravity overcomes the friction holding it in place. Test different objects to see which creates the most and least amount of friction with your ramp. Static electricity is a stationary electric charge and is typically produced when two objects rub against one another. This creates an imbalance of electric charges within or on the surface of a material. The static charge remains there until it's able to move away by electric current or electrical discharge. Static electricity is electricity that doesn't move and flow like normal electricity, but it can create sparks, crackling sounds, and even attract dust or hair. 